Welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. In this video, we're building a Space Marine Fortress. So I've been putting together a Blood Angels army for the past year or so, and I figured it's time that I make some terrain especially for them. A big inspiration for this project was the book Devastation of Bale by Guy Haley that I read this summer. In that book, the Blood Angels defend their home system of Bale against the High Fleet Leviathan, which is an invading Tyranid force of immense size. And it's a really fun book, really well written, and uh, there's some really cool siege type battle scenes in there, and I figured it would be cool to have the capability of doing this in my own 40k games. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make this modular fortress system I came up with that I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, yeah, hope you guys like it. I decided it was probably a good idea if I made some prototypes before diving into building the whole thing. So I started with a piece of foam board. This is going to be sort of the front portion of my wall, combined with these two pieces of one inch insulation sheeting. To make my corner towers, I dusted off some old geometry skills from elementary school and set my compass to three inches apart. I then made a curve and then starting on the point of that curve, made another curve and then centering my compass where the two intersect, made a third curve, another one at another intersection point and so forth like this. From there, it's simply a matter of connecting all the points in the previous step where two lines connect. And that gets you a perfect hexagon. So this will be the basis of the tower that we're going to make. I cut that out with an X-Acto knife. Next I cut a sheet with some 3 inch panels on it, so scoring most of the way through but not to the second layer of paper on the back. I cut the edges into a bevel everywhere that I have a bend in the paper. This will allow me to fold it into the correct shape in the next step, as you'll see in a moment here. As you can see, it gives it the clearance to fold with a nice clean bend. When you connect the edges together, you can make a pretty nice hexagonal prism with nothing more than an X-Acto knife and some foam board. Again, I use a little bit of painter's tape to set that up. Looking pretty good. I put the hexagonal piece on the top and secure it with some painter's tape. Doing this with tape really allows you to line the edges up precisely, which is pretty important for this to get nice crisp edges. If you're enjoying this video and you want to support the channel, check the links below and you'll see a link to my Patreon page. I'm super grateful to everybody who supports me on there because it really helps me to make these videos. You also get to see your name in the credits, get access to behind the scenes photos, Discord server, we can chat on there. It's pretty cool stuff. So check it out if you're interested. This basic tower and this basic wall shape will be the two main shapes in the system that make it work. As you can see, they can be combined to make a variety of different layouts. It can be a corner, even an interior corner, or just a wall section. Using a hot glue gun, I run a bead of glue along the inside of the tower shape. This will fill in that crack where I might have made an imperfect beveled cut and it'll also harden hard, which preserves the corner shape of each of these corners. So once that's dry, I can remove the painter's tape and have nice crisp edges and a pretty much perfect hexagonal prism. Next, I'm gonna cut some half inch strips of half inch insulation foam and make a master buttress, which I cut on a 45 degree angle. Then using that master, for all the other strips, I cut one of those on a 45 degree angle as well. This is one of those mini steps where a hot wire foam cutter would probably do a better job and get much more consistent results, but you can do it with a knife just fine. So I mark the sides of my walls just so I can figure out which one's which again. And then using the shape of that buttress, I trace a little groove on the side that I'm gonna cut out in a moment. And this is gonna be 
where it inserts onto the buttresses on the other pieces, creating an interlocking system. Carefully carve away the excess foam. And look at that, an extra buttress. It might be a slightly different shape, but we'll keep it anyways. I'm using Gorilla Glue construction adhesive here to glue the foams together. I've experimented a lot over the years, and this is my favorite one. It dries rock hard, it's pretty tacky right away, so things don't slide around too much while you're waiting for it to dry. It doesn't expand, it's just a good foam adhesive. While we're on the topic, let's talk about this Gorilla Glue for a second. If you've never worked in construction, you might have never used one of these caulking guns before. You squeeze the trigger, but when you stop, the stuff doesn't stop coming out because there's still pressure built up behind it. So this can be messy if you don't press this release trigger back here. It's a useful tip so you don't look over and see that you've squirted a bunch of extra glue on your desk once you've put it down. If you do happen to get a little bit of glue on your workstation, just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and that should clean it right up. To apply this glue to a large flat surface like these wall sections, I start by laying down a bead and then I spread it around with a cocktail skewer just to get a nice flat even layer that won't cause any clearance between the two pieces when I lay them together. You can get a nice flat bond that way. I made the wall section 9 inches long, so using a pencil and a ruler I divide it into 3 even sections of 3 inches each. If you recall, my corner hexagon is also 3 inches each. This will mean there will be sort of a uniformity to all these 3 inch panels that my system will be made out of. So using the Gorilla Glue, I glue some buttresses down onto the walls. And this adds a nice, simple, but also sturdy looking bit of detail that's easy to replicate across a lot of wall sections. I'm pretty happy with this design. It also adds a little bit of stability to have the buttresses hanging off the front like that. Any bulging glue, I just cleaned up with one of these extra offcuts. They're a perfect shape for it. I make the same guideline markings on the sides of the hexagon towers as well. This will give me a nice guideline of how to get my buttress perfectly level. Which of course I didn't do on all of them. Some of them are imperceptibly crooked, but you know what? I think it adds character. I really do. Your eye picks up on this organic human element to it, and I find it much more aesthetically pleasing to make tiny little mistakes here and there. Well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it at least. I cut some one inch strips of foam core and these are gonna be the parapet walls for my towers. There's a little bit of a challenge with these towers is if the wall sections keep moving around then how many walls do you put on each parapet section? So I realized I'm going to need to make some modular removable pieces. This is a great example of one of the many problems that will come out of the woodwork when you try to make a piece of terrain modular. If you try to get more applications out of something than just a static piece that looks good, it's always going to add complication in ways that you might not be able to anticipate. But everything can be solved with a little bit of ingenuity, and that's part of the fun of it. So after a bit of pondering, I realized two of the wall sections on the parapet have to be fixed anyways. So I just glued those in with a hot glue gun. Use minis to check scale as you build. You want to make sure that this wall seems imposing even to something hulking like this Contemptor Dreadnought. For the next step, I'm going to use some pre-made spackle, to which I added some grey paint to make this weird grey purple dark mixture here. And then I'm going to apply that with a brush everywhere onto my structure. This is going to smooth in the cracks between the foam and generally give a more concrete texture that's going to turn out really awesome. It's also going to really bring these things to life once they're dry because they're going to be gray. Look at that. 
So this is the interlocking system I've been talking about. The buttresses on the corner towers slot into the wall sections. It's looking pretty awesome. I thought it'd be really cool to have a wall section that's broken, a breach if you will. And so I sketched that out on one of the wall sections that I'd built. And then using a craft knife, just carved into that as best I could, hacking away chunks of foam, but leaving a little bit of clearance at the bottom for the rubble to pile up onto it. And I'd break that chunk out and accidentally break the whole thing, but that's okay. I'm gonna glue it back together. So using those pieces that I cut out of the wall, because they're probably the right volume for the rubble from the wall, makes sense, doesn't it? I will cut some little berms from that. I also have a buttress that I add some damage to, to sell the fact it's on the damaged wall. Using the Gorilla Glue, I add that sloping piece of stone, and then using some other scraps of foam, I break convincing rock-shaped pieces. I'm looking for something organic looking here. There's a few things that foam does that just doesn't look like something a rock would do. Like, for example, this piece. You see those triangular tooth-shaped bites out of the foam? That's no good, it's not gonna look like a rock. So just snap off those pieces, pulling them off, and you can find some nice little rock-shaped pieces. Those are gonna paint up nicely. I add a little bit of cereal box cardboard underneath the project here at this point. Adding a little bit of Gorilla Glue, I fix this down underneath, and that's going to be a nice base for all the extra chunks of rubble to keep them stuck to the piece and unified together with a nice flat bottom. Using more Gorilla Glue, I add some rubble chunks trying to figure out what's the most natural place where they would fall. There's something to consider here guys called the angle of repose, which is essentially, if you think about a pile of sand, it forms an angle at which it can't be piled any higher or which it'll slide down itself. So to make a realistic looking pile of any sort of particle, you need to consider the correct angle. Anything higher than this angle will look more like it's glued together, like a sandcastle, for example. Sandcastles don't have an angle of repose because they're made of wet sand and the surface tension holds the particles together. But I'm digressing. Speaking of sand, we're gonna start with some coarse sand that's rough and gritty and gets in everything, and then add some fine sand after to fill in the gaps in between that. We can now cut away the excess piece of cereal box and sort of hug the shape of the rubble giving it a nice organic look that'll look good on any battle mat we put it on. Next, using some medium chipboard, I'm gonna cut some pieces that are gonna make a nice set of gates with these pieces of foam board for a little bit of backing for extra thickness. I cut some interesting frame-like shapes. Chipboard is an awesome medium for using for this type of thing. It's a type of cardboard that's very thin and can be cut to nice sharp edges if you take your time and use a sharp blade. It is not to be confused with the chipboard they have in the UK or other parts abroad, which is a wood product that's uh, what we call particle board here that's wood chips and glue. This chipboard is definitely a type of cardboard. It is a paper product. It's the same stuff you would find at the back of a legal pad. So anyways, I'm using the same techniques I used to build the walls to build a little gateway for the doors I created. and that should give me a nice extra feature that will be the same size as one of the wall lengths so I can swap it in with the same system of towers and make some extra different layouts and have more game applicability. Applica applicability, that's the word. As you can see, I've done sort of a stylized Blood Angels logo design for the doors. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I think it looks like a nice strong fortified door that belongs to the Blood Angels. I'm going to use these hinges that I got at the dollar store and then just basically glue those into the frame. Nothing special, but there it is. Nice fortified Blood Angels-y door. As you can see, I did a Blood Angels door with sort of a stylized wing thing. You could do whatever legion you want, whatever chapter you want. 
I just did the blood angels because they're gonna be the primary utilizers. You know what? You know what one of my friends pointed out to me one time? That the word utilize is just a pretentious version of the word use and there's no actual reason to ever use it. So if you guys ever catch me saying utilize, catch me slipping, make sure you roast me down in the comments. I'm just kidding. Don't don't roast people in the comments, guys. Positivity, right? Yeah. I add some of this mud mixture to the breech piece as well. This one you really have to make sure to get it in and among all the rocks and gravel and chunks of foam. Otherwise, you'll have little light bits peeking out if you're not careful. Next, I mix some Mod Podge and gray paint and add another layer to all my walls. This is gonna seal in that mud layer which had a weird scratchy feel to it and make it nice and durable for the table. I dry brush some light gray over and then I come in with a dirty wash. This is a really important step to get it looking from blank gray to something with enough character to not stand out as plain and boring on your table. Nice long vertical streaks are the key to getting a nice weathered concrete look. And that's pretty much it. We'll call that done for now. As you can see, you can get a ton of different layouts for a ton of different types of games. And I'm really excited to play with this thing. It's just so cool getting in at eye level and seeing the capabilities. In future videos I want to add to this system. Right now it's sort of an exterior wall which is great, but I'd love to have more of an imposing fortress monastery type structure in the center. When they describe the Arx Angelicum, which is the Blood Angels Fortress Monastery in the book Devastation of Baal, it's really a massive sprawling structure and there's so much more going on than just a wall. In fact there's several walls of varying heights and there's all kinds of other stuff going on. So I've got a lot of ideas for this. I've also got ideas for making uh, chaos add-ons and versions. So I should be able to make this fit my Night Lords as well in future videos, which uh, should be really cool. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please like, comment down below, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.